Hey guys, Seth Perkins here. We're at the family owned butcher shop here in Creston, Ohio, White Feather Meats. Today, it's the second week of March and guess what's right around the corner? St. Patrick's Day. Guess what we love to make around here? Corned beef. We've got a little Irish blood running through our veins. So today we're gonna show you where corned beef comes from, how to cut it off the carcass, how to trim it, how to cure it, how to cook it, and best of all, how to eat it. We're gonna show you the entire process the whole way through. So what we have here is two halves of beef. Here's a side and here's a side. And located down here on the front quarter on both sides is a beef brisket. We're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna pull beef brisket and we're gonna show you how to trim it next. So follow along. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start my knife right here and as i should mention you probably already know the torinox six inch semi-stiff boning knife even have my favorite little notch i put on there that way i know it's mine available on our website go get one you're gonna love it so making a slice here on this carcass and then what i'm gonna do is just make another cut down here towards the shank I'm gonna get my fingers underneath this and just start peeling this brisket off, pulling it down. Now normally we would peel this off on the floor, you know, as we're cutting this carcass, but today, since we're only gonna be using the brisket to cure for corned beef, and we have the carcasses hanging in the cooler, I'm just simply gonna come in here and get myself a brisket. There it is. So since we have the entire carcass hanging in our butcher shop that we butchered, harvested right here on site under USDA inspection, we can come in here at any point and pretty much cut you whatever we need. So you could also use this brisket, you could smoke it, put it on your pellet grill, maybe you own a Traeger, maybe you own a big green egg, something like that. Uh, so pellet grill, charcoal grill, you can pretty much smoke it just like this, but today, I'm gonna show you how to trim it for corned beef. Let's head to the floor. All right, so now it's time to trim this brisket for corned beef. Today, we're only gonna be using the flat. So what this brisket consists of is the flat portion, and then we have the point that's located on this side. So today, we're only gonna be using the flat, but uh, I wanted to show you our processing floor is fairly clean today. We happen to be not processing this afternoon, so we thought it'd be a great opportunity to do this video. Now, I wanna show you, I am using a disposable cutting board, and those are available through Stark Boards, and you can get these on um, the internet, maybe on Amazon. We'll throw a link in the descriptions. Go ahead and snag these. You can put these uh, right on your kitchen counter. You know, maybe you wanna throw it on the picnic table, however you wanna trim it, but super handy. It's a disposable cutting board, awesome to use. You can throw it away when you're done. All right, so let's just get started trimming this brisket. We wanna remove this fat cover located right here on this top. And by doing that, I pretty much just get my knife, start it like you see here. And then what we'll do, anything that I trim off this brisket, we're gonna use for ground beef. So we'll go back through and we'll, you know, we'll make sure we get all of the meat and everything out of this fat. But I wanna remove this point. And there's a seam right here. And if you follow this seam right down through this fat, you can just start removing any excess fat. We like to take um, quite a bit of fat off this, off this flat. But uh, when you make corned beef, you wanna get most of this fat off here because after you boil it and you leave that fat on there, it can just get a little bit unpleasant. So we'll just continue to, to trim this. You can see I'm taking this hand and I'm, I'm holding the, the cut of meat while I'm using my knife hand just to trim that fat off there. Staying as close to the fat as you can, 
not getting into the meat. If you have a little bit of fat left on there, you know, that's not gonna hurt, something like that. So there's the top. The bottom, we're just gonna go ahead and pretty much do the same. Tune my knife up a little bit, roll that edge back into place, and just continue removing some of this fat. We're looking in pretty good shape here. You can see how the grains are running this way on this brisket. So when we go to slice it after it's been corned, cured, we'll slice and cooked, we'll slice it against the grain. So corning beef is part of the curing process. Doesn't necessarily mean that it has corn in it. Uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use a blend of some of our favorite spices. We'll also throw a link in. There's some fantastic recipes online. I know Traeger Grills has one and, and some of those folks like that. So here we are, brisket flat. This is trimmed, ready to make corned beef. So at this point, we're gonna get our seasonings laid out here for our brine and we're gonna get this soaking. Check back in a second. We have the brisket flat all trimmed and we're ready to make the brine. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show you what we use for our corned beef brine mix. First of all, I have a gallon of water. So exactly one gallon of water here in our roasting pan. First ingredient I'm gonna add is one pound of sea salt. So just go ahead and add a pound of sea salt. The next ingredient is going to be celery powder. So we're actually going to use celery powder and sea salt as the curing agent for this corned beef. So we're just going to go ahead and mix our celery powder in. We're going to whisk that into the sea salt as we go. So the celery powder and sea salt is going to act as a curing agent in this meat. However, it's going to be a natural curing agent. Same thing happens when you eat celery, your saliva in your mouth turns it into a nitrate. So that's what we're gonna use for our brine. So now that we have the celery powder and sea salt mixed together, we're gonna go ahead and add our remaining ingredients. We have some mustard seed. Just gonna add some mustard seed in there. We're gonna add some black peppercorns. A little bit of ginger. And this recipe is so simple, you can use you know, you, you can very easily do this at home. A little bit of allspice. You can crush these ingredients a little bit more if you'd like to get a little, you know, a little bit more flavor out of them. We found that uh, it works pretty well just to throw the whole peppercorn and the whole allspice in there. But uh, this one, I did crush it up a little bit. This is uh, two cinnamon sticks. So we're gonna go ahead and just add those in. And then some bay leaves. Add that into our mix. Just whisk it up good. Make sure that all the ingredients are blended well. All right. So there you have the brine. The brine's all ready to go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an injector and we're gonna pull some of the solution out. And we're actually gonna inject it into the brisket flat. This mix right here, you might think that, um, you know, maybe we used quite a bit of salt and we did. However, this is only gonna be an overnight brine. This isn't gonna be a four or five day brine or anything like that. So it's a fairly quick brine, it's a quick process. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get it injected and then we're gonna put it in our brine and we're gonna let it sit overnight. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of our brine solution inside the brisket. So we're just gonna take our brisket flat, we're gonna put it on our little trigger tray here. So that way that any of the brine that we might lose will catch it inside that tray. So we're going to go ahead and just use our injector. And by injecting this brisket, it's just going to take those ingredients and it's going to distribute them throughout this brisket flat a little bit more evenly. And then that also shortens your, your curing time so we don't have to let it soak near as long. And as far as knowing how much to inject this with, it's really, I know we've kind of learned over time, you know, just by eye, what it's going to take. But when you see the solution to start coming through the uh, grains of the meat, 
you know, you're doing a pretty good job at, at getting that solution inside that brisket. Making sure that you get the thickest parts cured the best. And the celery powder mixed with the sea salt, believe it or not, does a really good job curing. So after we cook this, you'll see when we slice it, it's gonna have a really nice, really nice color. Any type of injector is gonna work for you. You can get one, you know, for turkeys or anything like that. So at this point, you can see that the brine, um, we have some here in our pan, but you can see it's, it's pretty much coming out of most of the, the fibers of the meat. So at this point, we're ready to just go ahead and put it in our brine solution. Go ahead and dump the rest of that back in there. And then what you can do, just to make sure you keep this brisket flat fully submerged in the brine, you can take a food safe container, just a plate or a dish or something like that, and just put it on top of that brisket and that's gonna keep it fully submerged down in the solution. We can go ahead, throw our lid on there, let this baby sit overnight. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this roasting pan, we're gonna add potatoes, we're gonna add some carrots, we're gonna add some purple cabbage, some, a regular uh, head of cabbage, a couple more ingredients that we'll show you tomorrow. And we're gonna get the Traeger fired up and this one is going on our Traeger pellet grill. So stay tuned, we'll be back, we'll show you the rest of the process. We're back. It's the next day. Our brisket has had a chance to soak in our brine overnight. And also, we've got something special for you. In the spirit of St. Patrick's Day, woo! <laughs> we're the kilted butchers today. It's in our blood, we can't resist. Scott and I used to do Scottish games, we used to do throwing and stuff like that. So, we busted out the kilts for this part. We wanna have a good time. So, check this out. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the brisket from the brine. We'll simply just pull this brisket flat out. And you can see that that cure has kind of changed the color of that meat, turning it just a, a slight bit of gray. But what that'll do is after we're done cooking it, it'll be nice cherry red. So we're going to go ahead and place our brisket in the pan. It's settled into our pan. At this point, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna rinse just a little bit of this loose ingredients off. I can even pull some of those off there and save them. So I'm gonna rinse this a bit and I'll be right back. So my brisket's rinsed. At this point, what I wanna do, I have a piece of cheesecloth here. It's actually a ham net. This is what we use to smoke our hams in. I'm going to strain this brine I want to save part of this brine, but I also want to save all of our ingredients. So I'm going to go ahead and dump all those right into this cheesecloth. What we're going to do with this is we're going to make a little bouquet. We don't want to lose all those delicious flavors. Now we have a nice bouquet that we're going to toss right in here. So I got a little bit of rinsing to do and we'll be right back. So for the, this part, for the cooking process, we typically use about 50% just water, and then we take the brine solution that that brisket was cured in overnight, and we dump about 50% of that brine solution back into the water. So about a 50-50 mix. We added quite a bit of salt to this when we cured it, Remember I said, you know, we just did it overnight. It's a fairly quick process. So that way we're diluting that brine down, that liquid down a little bit. But we also, we saved that little bouquet of spices and we're just gonna go ahead and toss that right in there because that's just gonna continue to add flavor as this cooks. At this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our brisket aside 
and I'll show you what veggies we're going to add to the mix. We have red potatoes, pretty simple. Just chop up a few potatoes, however you like to cut them, whatever size pieces you like. It's completely up to you. And I'm a butcher, I'm a meat cutter. I'm not a vegetable cutter, so if anybody out there has any critiquing on how I cut my vegetables, I'll admit, I'm no pro. I just get them cut up. So today we use red potatoes. These are delicious. We love them. We have a green cabbage. Cut a little bit of that core off of there. Might pull a couple of these external leaves off. We washed everything before we got started. And at this point, I think I'm gonna leave these, um, these slices fairly big. I don't wanna cut them up into you know small pieces because the cabbage as it cooks is it's kind of pretty much just fall apart so and add a little purple in there too just has a really nice look and you certainly can't get much better than corned beef and cabbage for saint patrick's day some baby carrots and these will all get added to our pot once the brisket is fairly tender. So we're actually gonna wait to add these, that way they don't get mushy, they just get nice and soft. Red potatoes, green cabbage, purple cabbage, and some baby carrots. I'm also gonna throw in some dill. So we'll have a little bit of dill that we're just gonna throw right into the mix. So that's our veggies, pretty nice looking display. We're gonna get the brisket, we're gonna get it on the Traeger, we're gonna smoke it for about two hours at 185 degrees. At that point, we're gonna crank our temp to 350, we're gonna put the brisket in the solution, we're gonna smoke it for an additional maybe three-ish hours at 350, taking it to an internal temp of maybe somewhere around 200 or until it's fork tender. At that point, we're gonna add all these vegetable ingredients until they soften up, dinner will be served. So follow me to the grill, let's get this brisket on the Traeger. Ah, it's a wee bit brisk this morning in my kilt. I'm not sure how my accent is, but anyways, first thing I noticed when I walked outside was the smoke smell from this Traeger. We're using a signature blend uh, pellets, so if anybody asks, that's what we're gonna use. And you can see smoke's rolling quite nicely. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the brisket flat and we're just gonna place it on the top tray of the Traeger. We're going to grab our meat probe. We're going to put it in the thickest portion of this brisket flat, making sure that it's nice and centered. That way we get the best temperature reading. And we're going to take, and once this has reached probably about two hours, so um, I'm going to bump my temperature up to 185, hit set. So what I want to do is I want to take this brine mix and I want to put it inside the grill right underneath that brisket. It's gonna raise that rack up a little bit, but that's okay. What that's gonna do is it's gonna start to heat that brine up. Um, that way when we go to add the brisket into the brine, the brine's already somewhat hot. Uh, it'll, take, it'll, it'll go a lot quicker once we crank it to 350 to get it to simmer in a boil. So, plus, you never know, it might catch some of those juices dripping down in there. So that's how we're gonna do it. Check back when uh, about two hours in, and we're gonna put it in the brine. We're two hours in. This brisket flat has been smoking at 185 degrees. Now it's time to put it in our brine. Look at that. You can tell it's got that nice smoke on there. So all we're going to do is pull it onto our tray. We're going to remove the top rack inside this grill. So let's go ahead and just get that out of the way. Now at this point, we're going to put this brisket right in the brine. So you can see how we put that brine inside the grill. Now that that water has had a chance to heat up, it's nice and warm, our bouquet's in there. All those wonderful flavors are gonna be coming through. Fully submerged 
probe is still in the meat, so we keep an eye on our internal temp. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and crank our temperature up to 350 degrees. And now we wait. So it's gonna be an additional probably about three hours. At this point, we'll come back in, we'll check and see if it's fork tender, should hit about 200 degrees internal temp. We're gonna add all of our veggies and our goodies to it at that point. And then it'll be an additional 45 minutes or so and we'll have corned beef. So check back in a second. Two hours of smoke time and about three hours at 350. This corned beef has reached an internal temp just over 200 degrees. Now it's time to get it off and add our veggies. Let's see what we've got. Let's pop the lid and take a look at this brisket. Wow. This brisket's looking amazing. It's time to add some veggies. So pretty simple, take our dill, spread our dill around inside here. We're gonna add our potatoes. Next it's the cabbage, put our green cabbage in there and the purple. And I may have too many vegetables here. So I think I might just leave a few of these out. So I didn't quite know how many to cut that'll fit inside the, the roasting pan. A couple chunks of butter. This is ready to go back on the Traeger for about 45 minutes. So we grab our lid, back on the Traeger we go. 45 minutes later, we should have some awesome corned beef, cabbage, potatoes, and carrots. Check back been about 45 minutes to maybe maybe 50 minutes since we added all of our veggies. I did crank the temp up to 450 halfway through that period. So we figured on it taking, you know, around 45 minutes just to speed the process up a little bit. I cranked it to 450. The potatoes are soft. It's time to get it off the grill. So let's go ahead and check this out. Got some gloves. We'll throw in a link. Heat resistant up to over 400 degrees. Don't want to burn ourselves. Now, man, woo! Can you smell that? Wow! That smells delicious. The moment of truth. Look at that. That, my friends, looks just absolutely amazing. There's that chunk of brisket, that corned beef. We have our cabbage, our potatoes. Everything's nice and soft. It's time to pull this brisket out, slice it up. Let's build a plate. It's time to slice it and see how we did. You can see those grill marks on there from the smoking period that it spent on that Traeger. I can tell that the fibers are just starting to pull apart. So I believe this brisket is cooked near perfection. So you can see the grains are running this way. We want to cut against the grain. So we're just going to go ahead and start slicing. That my friends is going to be delicious corned beef. I can feel that it's just slightly pulling apart. You don't want it to fall apart. You want those fibers to kind of pull apart real nice. You can see that we have a nice cherry red look and those, those fibers are just pulling apart so nice. That celery powder and sea salt are, are what uh, you use to achieve that, you know, that nice, nice red look inside the meat. If you look at that, it just wants to pull apart delicious, delicious corned beef. I'm gonna plate up a nice serving here. Some of that beautiful corned beef. Have those veggies on there. This, my friends, is perfect, perfect St. Patrick's Day meal. Right there you have it. Corned beef and cabbage, 
potatoes and carrots. So there it is, folks. We butchered the beef, harvested it, butchered it, showed you how to cut the brisket, showed you how to trim it, showed you how to brine it, and showed you how to cook it. Now we get to eat it. And once again, too bad there isn't such a thing as smell-o-vision because this smells crazy, crazy good. Make this dish. Make it for your friends. Make it for your family. It's not hard to do. Perfect for St. Patrick's Day. If you don't have a Traeger, you know, trust us, go out and buy one. We'll throw a link in, snag a grill, ship it to your door. Absolutely love this grill. However, maybe you can't afford one. That's fine too. You can make this in your oven at home. You can do it on your gas grill. You can do it on your charcoal grill, however you'd like. Obviously, you know, if you do it on your gas grill or in your oven, you're not gonna get the smoking feature that we use here in the first part of the video. But anyways, you can certainly do this at home. Go grab the few ingredients that it took to produce this. And in the end, you'll have some amazing corned beef brisket. Now, what a lot of people don't understand is what the corning actually means. So there was like a big rock salt that was called corn salt back in the day. That's what they used to cure it and preserve it. So. Corning is the brining, curing process of the brisket, turning it into corned beef. There's no corn in it or anything like that, so just to clear that up. But anyways, I'm gonna go snag some people and we're gonna eat it. Add a little bit of that broth, just to keep things nice and juicy. I brought in this guy, the Kilted Brother, Ooh. for a taste test. Grab some, let's give this a try. Oh my gosh. You know, I always tell when it's cooked perfectly when the, the grains pull apart mm. like that. Oh. Cheers. Man. For our Irish heritage. That's great, Seth. Fantastic. Scotch Irish. It's in our blood. Wearing the kilts. St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner. You guys. I get a potato on the deal. Ma'am. Mm. You got to try this yourselves at home. Oh. Unreal. Mm. Scott, Seth, we're the Bearded Butchers, White Feather Meats, Creston, Ohio. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell for notifications. We're going to have tons more. You guys seem to like these videos where we take them from where it's located on the carcass, how to trim it, how to cook it, all the way through. So the only thing that's left to do is to have you guys over to eat it. Appreciate you watching. Don't forget, follow us on Instagram, Facebook. You know the deal. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Come out and see us. We're in White Feather Meats, Creston, Ohio. We'd love to have you swing by the store. Thanks and happy St. Patrick's Day.